Hello folks, and this is Kiki, uh, doing Let's Play Army Man, World at War, Team Salt. And this will be the first mission out of the frying pan. Uh, we've escaped from a prisoner of war camp, and here's how to explain the sk different skills and stuff. As you can see, this mission requires a mechanic and a linguist. Not really, but uh, for this premise it does, and you'll see later. Uh, basically, as you can see, each person has speed, which means how fast they run, stealth, which means uh, how much noise you make per step, and how many hit points they have. Also, uh, you'll notice that some guys have walkie-talkies, some guys have like artillery guns, uh, like he has explosives and a, and a communications thing. Uh, basically, that tells you the various skills that they do. Like this mission, you need a mechanic and a linguist. Mechanic fixes uh, different vehicles and uh, like like the 50 cal earlier in a previous example. Uh, and the uh, linguist is pretty much the uh, I have to read the sign. And here here's the opening cutscene. Uh, there, there's no music or nothing to it. It's just basically jeep driving sound effects and foot scuffling. And I apologize, I got to correct myself earlier, there are six guys, not eight guys. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six. See, six guys. And it looks like this guy driving away is a, as a general or something, I don't know. But pretty much he leaves there. Or he could just be a guard on rotation on leave or something. Who knows? But we're deep in tan territory. Also, just because the tents are green doesn't mean that we're in green territory. It just, they decided to go lazy in this one instead of color coding the uh, pup tents. Everything is green. Anything that's camouflaged is green. Uh, like I said, uh, they kind of went lazy with it, but that's fine. Oh wait, now it says at the uh, now that the green army's plan to defeat the uh, thing is activated, we have to get to a bridge to follow the next orders. So a uh, squad of eight was, I mean, a six was uh, captured on purpose. But first steps first is we need to get a weapon. Right now we have a knife, and yes, I know it looks like what it looks like. So yeah, I figured I would show. <laughs> And that's in the joke from there from then on. Anyway, as you can see, it's a little less clunky than the bayonet. You can just run right up to him and stab him. Nothing too hard. Unfortunately, whoever picks up whatever weapon uh, keeps it. In other words, since Shadow picked up a default rifle from the uh, enemy tan here, that means that he gets it and Boomer doesn't. I'm trying to switch weapons here and I can't. So let's go ahead and move him up. Now remember, there's a mechanic and a linguist involved here. Uh, Boomer will be for the, in this mission the linguist, while uh, Shadow is the mechanic. Uh, like I said in a previous video, uh, Shadow also serves as a marksman, so uh, pretty much you'll be using him a lot because most missions require either a mechanic or a marksman. And since we need linguist is pretty much the sign reader, uh, and also espionage. Uh, pretty much in this game, tan it, language is possibly different. Maybe we're just in like you know, it look maybe we're just in a different part of tan territory or something, where they speak a different language, but they speak a different language, and we need translations for it. It's not really explained. Also, here's some more showing off of the uh, auto aim being a major annoyance. As you can see up ahead, there is a tan right next to that tree. And I don't know if you can make it out or not, but as you can notice, I still can't shoot him, and I'm way over here. I, that means that all fights have to be rather close. And does it, 
and you can't set up ambushes or whatnot. In other words, this time 3DO isn't going to let us cheat by using uh, manual targeting. We have to actually engage and fight this time. Uh, the AI doesn't move up. Uh, it's pretty much Sarge's Heroes AI on this one. Uh, pretty much uh, they move up to a fixed location and then they just stand there. Uh, personally, I like the uh, Lancey and Air AI just because they at least chased you, or they you know they moved around, they act, they do whatever you know. I mean, they reacted to what you did. Versus this time, they just eh, stand there. See, <laughs> they won't chase you; they just stand there. And as you can see, there's some more auto aim issues. I should be hitting him, but yet I'm not. There's a limited range. And like I said, this comes into play later on in a in a mission that's down the road, and why I'm pointing this out quite blatantly here. But we'll go on from there. Uh, basically, this is a kind of downtime here, too, so we can pick up some weapons and whatnot. Uh, what each class does, I mean, each thing is you have six guys, and each guy has uh, two roles. To it, like shit out here is the uh, mechanic and the sniper or marksman, uh, and then you have boomer who is uh, heavy weapons, which is looks kind of like the uh, artillery piece and the uh, and a little paper thing, which is linguist. And uh, linguist comes into play later on in the missions and. Most questions, I mean, most of these missions require a linguist because you have to read a sign or something. Uh, pretty much, if they ran out of ideas, they just threw a linguist there. Uh, here's kind of the case in point of what I'm talking about. Uh, it says, I can't read this language. Now, uh, this is pretty blatantly obvious what it is. It's a minefield. Uh, pretty much, like it's a beginner noob trap. Uh, I mean, if you played any Army Man game and you've seen something like that, you can immediately guess it's a minefield. You won't need a linguist for it. But uh, just to show you the point of what the linguist's job is. And uh, there, we'll go ahead and activate that box. Uh, you see there's like three grenades and... Uh, a fully auto. Yeah, and this one they decide to keep the uh, enemies drop weapons premise. It's not as often, but it does. You know, you can blow up a box, and sometimes there'll be ammo in it. No, they did try. Also, here's one other thing. You'll notice that when I put him and I switched, that he's in the uh, in the kneel position, and yet when, after I pick up this stuff. Uh, this will take me a minute. But after I pick up the stuff, and uh, I'll go ahead and show you what the sign says. But you'll notice that he'll be in the standing position, meaning that if you all of a sudden switched and you had a mob of enemies on you, or, you, or that you accidentally triggered, if he dies, it's to lose. In other words, he's a uh, constant object, just like you're a constant object. And so you have to be very careful on where you switch your guys. Also, like I said, caution, minefield. No minesweeper. Kind of a bummer, but no minefield. Anyway, I mean, no minesweeper. But uh, we'll go ahead and let's kind of explore that. And all of a sudden, the game decides it wants to go like mega lag for whatever reason. That's kind of an abnormal thing. Don't know why it's doing it. Because generally it runs pretty smooth. Also, I apologize that the screen, if it appears dark on the YouTube thing, uh, this is supposed to be night and uh, it is a little dark ish. So I'd recommend brightening your screen if it's too dark. Anyway, we'll continue on with the mission. And we'll go to the, the optional part. You don't need to do this, but this is why the me mechanic is required. 
some missions the extra part the extra partner is required sometimes it's optional or just like a convenience factor saying oh hey you can do this if you wanted to we're letting you have the chance to you know. anyway now I got myself stuck in this tent here And as you can see, there's some guys I can clearly shoot, but yet I can't due to ammo range. And you'll notice that there's a gray jeep up ahead. You might barely be able to see it, but it's a gray jeep. Uh, that does not mean gray as in gray nation. That just means gray as in it's a neutral object that you can use if you want to. Uh, I don't know why they decided just to do that that way, but that's their thing. But pretty much anything that's interactable like that it will always be gray, uh, for the most part, or it'll stay green. And it's just a color code to let you know that, hey, you can interact with this. And this is, again, why I said that it, this would be a good uh, type of MMO style or something. And we have to blow up the boxes. As you see, if I had tools, I can fix this. Well, the tools are in the boxes here. So we have to get ourselves situated just right to where we can blow the boxes up. And of course, because this is Team Assault, we have to keep both guys together as close as we can. Uh, some missions you'll notice, like I hardly use the other guy, and some missions you'll notice I'll switch quite often between the two guys. And it's because not all, like I said, not all the missions require that you do it. Like I said, here I could just walk shit out all the way through it and manually kill everything if I wanted to, or I can do like I'm doing now, which is what it was intended to do. It's completely optional. And anyway, we'll go ahead and take the wrench. But and it says I can't leave my partner behind. And then it spams again. If, if I had tools, I can fix this. In other words, what it means is you have to have your partner standing right next to it in order for it to work. Now all of a sudden it turns green, and we man the gun. And this is the only manual aiming that we get in this game, is uh, vehicles and whatnot, so I'm going to enjoy it while I can. But again, like I said, this... Some of these are entirely optional. Some of these are re required. Uh, there is one mission where I really hate, which requires mechanic, and uh, it's near the tail end of the game, so you won't be seeing it for a while. There's also one really annoying mission which requires a I think it's a linguist. Uh, there's also two other things that they use sparingly, which is the uh, explosives guy. There's only, I think, one or two. There might be only one explosives guy. Uh, and there's only one communications guy, uh, pretty much. Communication guy is pretty much if you have a mission where you're supposed to report to uh, the Green HQ about, oh, this is what we're doing, you know. And it gives you instruction to go on to the next part, or uh, the demolitions guy is pretty much like you have to set charges to blow something up. And those are used sparingly. It's just mostly going to be shit out for this LP, like I said in my boot camp videos. And if I if I would could I would you can see the detail of the moon a bit there. Anyway, that's the end of the road here. And once again, uh, we killed everything, so just kind of make sure nothing else pops out on us. And we'll go ahead and uh, call the video here. As you can see, I need my partner before I can escape. And there's a lot of cinemax in this game. So, well done, man. And uh, this is Kenny signing out. Thank you.